Hello everyone, it is Ryan here again on the Syntax Byte, and I've got another Firefox extension development tutorial here for you today. Today we're going to write an extension that uses a background script and the storage API to actually store some information about the websites that users are visiting. And then in the next video we'll actually create a browser button that has a UI allowing us to view that data. But for now, at the end of the video, what we're going to have is an extension here. It's going to be stored in our local extension storage and it's going to have the URL of the website that we visit, the host name, and then the number of seconds that we visited the site. And this will continue to update as we browse around in Firefox. And then next video we can create a little one of the browser buttons here that will allow users to actually see which sites they're spending most of their time on. So it's just stored locally, uh, it's not sent anywhere, but it just gives users a view at their browsing history and how they're spending their time on the internet. So it might just be kind of a curious uh, thing to uh, play around with and we'll learn about background scripts and the storage API. So without further ado, let's just jump right in. I'm gonna go ahead and disable the existing version of the extension and we're gonna start just with this manifest.json file right here. So if you haven't seen my last video, go ahead and click the card on this video to see that previous video where I go over the manifest JSON file in more detail, but I've already gotten it started here with a manifest name, version, description. So go ahead if you need to pause the video to type those in, but we're gonna move right on from this manifest.json. The next thing that we do need to do that is new from the last video is we need a background object. And what that is is a list of background scripts to run. Now, unlike content scripts, which we used in the last video, these background scripts aren't associated with any particular page. So we don't need to provide a URL for them to run on. This just runs when the extension starts. So let's go ahead and make background.js, that file we're referring to. And to start off, I'm just going to console.log uh, extension enabled. And that should allow us to see some output. So we'll go ahead and load the extension and just make sure it's working properly. You can do this as a load temporary add-on and I've got us here in YT background script. Click the manifest.json, click open. Go over here to inspect and this is where we'll see the con console for the background script. And we see that extension enabled. So we know that that's working. Okay, so the first thing we need to do now is we need to actually store what the active tab is. So I'm gonna let current tab equal null. And every tab in Firefox has a sort of ID. So when you switch to the tab, there's an event that occurs. We can respond to that event and store the ID of the tab. Now, you'll see later in the tutorial, I use a set interval to regularly update the data in storage. We could probably actually just query for the current tab at that time, but I wanna show you guys how to actually add an event listener and respond to an event. So what we're gonna do here, um, so we're just gonna do browser.tabs.onactivated, that's that event, uh, and we're gonna add a listener. So add listener, and that's gonna pass us an event. And for now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just console.log uh, event.tabid. So this should be just logging numbers for us. So let's go ahead and reload. And then we can switch between tabs. And we can see it says four, six, four. So those are our tab IDs. So we know that that's working. So instead of console logging it, what we're gonna do is we're gonna store as current tab equals event.tab ID. And that's a lowercase. Perfect. So now that we have our current tab ID, what I wanna do is I wanna regularly update it with the um, the host name of the UR, like of the site that the user's on, and I want to update the number of seconds in the storage based on that. So I'm going to do this with a set interval. You could probably also try and track the event of when a user clicks off the tab, and then have stored the time they entered it, and then stored the time that they left. But it's a little bit more complicated. You'd have to respond to quite a number of events. Uh, but the only the upside with that would just be better performance. Uh, but I'm going to set use a set interval. I've been browsing around with this extension enabled and I haven't found significant performance issues with my browser from it. So I think this is okay to do. Uh, we're going to create a function called update browse time. This is going to be an async function and we're going to do that once every second. And so here we're going to have an async function update browse time. The first thing we're going to do is if that current tab is not set, 
uh, then we're just going to return. Okay, so if that is set, what we're going to do is we need to actually get the URL of the tab that's currently active so we can update it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say let frames equal null, and we're going to get the web navigation frame. So we're going to try frames equals await browser dot web navigation dot get all frames. And so each tab might have multiple frames in it because you can have like an iframe or something like that. But there's always one parent frame, I believe. And that parent frame has a has a frame I uh, doesn't have a parent frame. Sorry. So if it's a child frame, then it has a parent frame ID. And if it's the parent frame, like the top level frame, then it doesn't have a parent frame ID. So that's how we can figure out what it is. But we're going to start by doing a get all frames. And that's going to return an array. Um, we need to pass it as details and it's passed as an object. So we're going to say tab ID is current tab. So that's the tab we want to get the frames for. We're also going to have a catch block here and we're just going to log any errors. Okay, so console.log error. Okay, so now that will give us the frames. So that's going to be an array, like I said, and so we need to actually find the top level frame because that will have the correct URL on it that's in the user's address bar. So what I could do is say let frame equal frames.filter. We're going to filter this array. And we're going to find the frame where the parent ID is not set. And not set in this case is going to be equal to negative one. So we're going to take each frame and say that we're looking for the one where frame, parent frame ID is equal to negative one. And there should be only one of these. Uh, of course, it's an array filter, so it's going to filter into another array, but we can just take the first element just like that. And so that's going to be our top level frame. So at this point, I'm going to console.log. Uh, frame dot URL and we should be able to see that it's passing around the URL of the tabs that we're activating and it's it's printing the active the active URL once a second now as I was mentioning earlier we do actually need a permissions um, array in our manifest JSON to use this so our permission is going to be a web navigation just like that we might as well add storage here we're going to need it in just a moment anyway so we'll add storage so now if we go back to firefox and we go reload uh it's giving us an error uh, it expected that after a property name ah because this should be an array not an object Just reload, perfect. And so now we have this about debugging. We have this and we have frame is null. Okay, frame is null. Property tab ID is required. Okay, so frame was null because we uh, misspelled tab ID. So just make sure it's a lowercase d when you write the ID. That's pretty standardized across the API. Let's go ahead and reload that. And so now you can see like every second we're getting the, um, and you can see it updating over here, we're getting the current URL that we're on printed to the console. So that's pretty good. So now what we could do is we could take that URL, we want to get just the host name and we probably also want to ignore any of these special URLs. And then we want to update the storage. So where I'm doing this console log here, I'm going to say if uh, not frame.url.starts with HTTP, then it must be one of those special Firefox ones. I'm just going to return. We're not going to log that information. Then I'm going to say let hostname equal new URL. We're going to pass it that frame.url, and then we're going to get dot hostname. And then we got another try catch here because we're going to update the storage and this is another await. So we're going to do try let seconds equals await and then we're going to get from the local storage. So there's actually three types of storage. The two that you're going to be primarily concerned with are sync and local. Sync is what Firefox will sync across devices 
and local is just local to the computer. So in this case, I'm gonna use the local one. So await browser dot storage dot local dot get. And then we pass this an object of the things we're trying to get. We're gonna get host name and it has to go in brackets just because it's a variable, otherwise it will get host name. But instead it will get, you know, whether this is Google or DuckDuckGo or whatever's there, whatever site we're visiting, we're gonna get the value for that. We're gonna pass a default value of zero. And then once that's done, we can go ahead and do a browser dot storage dot local dot set. And we can set again the host name. And we can set it to seconds. And then we need to do seconds host name because it actually sends us back an object with this as, as a member, not just doesn't just send us this. Uh, so it sends us back that object. And then we can do plus one. So we're going to increase that by one second. And then of course we need to have another catch statement on here. And console.log any errors that might crop up. And with this being done now, we should actually see that it updates the host name and the seconds in the browser storage. So let's go ahead and reload and have a look and see if everything's working properly. Okay, I'm gonna actually just open a site, you know, let's open Duolingo. Okay. We'll spend some time on here and then we'll go back to our extension here. Now you can find the storage by clicking this storage tab in the expector and then extension storage. It's not showing anything at the time. Let's just try this again. And we can see that it says www.duolingo.com and it's a value of six. So we spent six seconds on Duolingo. So at this point, guys, our application here is done. If you did want to copy the code for this, I should have a written tutorial for it shortly down in the description. If it's not there, it's probably just not out yet. So check back again soon. I hope you guys did enjoy this. And remember, in the next video, we'll create the actual user interface for this um, extension where users can actually view the sites that they spent time on and how long they spent there. But until next time, guys, please give a like on the video if it helped you out. Subscribe and even click the notification bell to be notified when I post that new video showing how we're going to create the user interface for this extension. And I will see you next time.